Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over some more advanced string functions. I'm back on my 311 service request data set and we're mainly looking at the agency name, the category and the complaint type. Kind of demonstrate some of these uh, more advanced string functions or just kind of different string functions. I don't think they're, they're that advanced. The more advanced stuff would be in the regular expressions, which we'll touch on today, but we will uh, go further into in another video. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run a query um, and I'm going to use a function called contain substring and this will return a boolean um, if a substring is contained within a certain column. So we're pulling the agency name, category and complaint type and then we're running this function contain substring, complaint type, cans appears in the string. If that appears anywhere in the string, this will come up with true. If it doesn't appear, it's going to come up false. It's going to run this. And from the results, you can see, you can see that um, there's a lot of trues in there. So that's how to get the Boolean out. A better use of this function is to use it in the um, where clause. So what I'm going to do with this function here, and this is a bit of a longer function, is I'm doing the same, right? I'm selecting the agency name category complaint type. I'm also going to group by those and I'm going to group uh, aggregate count the unique key which is just primary key so that's just there's a unique key for every single row of the data set and i'm going to count the amount of times these three appear um but i'm doing a where clause which is contain substring substring uh, complaint type cans it's going to run this query now and what it's going to return is uh, there's 13 altogether where cans appears in the complaint type and you can see that this uh DPM, BSMQ, um, litter receptacles, and cans left out 24-7 is 12,000 times in the data set. So the next one we're going to look at is we're going to look at length. Um, and this is super useful for, um, for filtering on length of certain fields. But for the first query, I'm just going to show you what that looks like on a line level. So again, we've got the agency, we've got the category name, we've got the complaint type. I'm using the length function to get the length of the complaint type. And I'm going to order this by length descending. So you'll see the ones with the larger length coming up first. It's going to run this query. And this query is returning the length of the complaint type. You can see this is quite a big one. And that's the largest one in the data set. But I'm just going to use this here uh, to get a specific uh, length type in my where clause. So again, agency name category complaint type. I'm going to use a where clause here and then length when complaint type is between 200 and 250. I want to just pull all those uh, rows. So you can see here that there is not that many rows, nine altogether within the data set. So in this one, I'm selecting the agency name category complaint type starts with agency name SSP. And this will, again, this will return a Boolean. I'm not putting this in a where clause. I'm just putting it out on the row level. And um, so I'm going to run this. And what this will do is for every row, it's going to say agency name starts with, with SSP true or false. And I'm just calling that SSP here. So you can see on the first row, this doesn't start with SSP. So it's coming out with a false. And on the second row, this does start out with an SSP. So it's coming out true. So the, the ends with is the exact same kind of idea as the starts with. So with the ends with, what we're going to do is we're going to actually put that into the where clause. So again, agency name, category complaint type, where agency names ends in queue. I'm going to run this. And then when this runs, you'll see that the only thing that's going to come up is where agency name ends in queue. Uh, how the nested replace would work is it will um, it will replace you can replace multiple things with multiple things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just use this in the query. So agency name category complaint type and replace category three one one. So you can see the three one one here. Um, sorry, the three one one in the category here. We could replace that as three one three. And that's run through the data set now. And you can see 
that the category here is 311. And then when I run the nested replace function, because this is coming with another row here, you can see 3131. We can do re replace function twice. So say if I wanted to replace the 311, but I also wanted to replace the KB as well. Um, and say I had multi, I can just do loads of different nests. So I'm doing what I did the first time inside the nest. So I'm replacing the category 311 with 313 but I'm also replacing from that. So I'll perform this function first and then this function second. I'm replacing KB with 314. And you can see my nested replace here has replaced. So if I look at these two here, I've got my 311 has changed to 313 and my KB events has changed to 314. So I'm gonna say for every, for every complaint type that ends with 24 seven, I want to get the posi position of left out and I'll show you where you can use this later on. So this is more something to be used within another function. Um, so I'm going to run this. And we can see that the left out position in here. So you can see that the left out is a different. Um, it's a different case in here, so it's not picking it up. But in here we've got left out. And you can see that that is string position five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then that's coming out here. What I'm going to do is the same thing, right? Where complaint types end at 24 seven. And I'm gonna take a substring uh, from the complaint type and I'm going to put the string position in here. So this will start from our string position. And I'm gonna run this. So that five then comes into my my query so if i say if i say in here i want a substring of this where the left out starts and what this will do is it'll just remove the first couple of uh, characters so this is a substring that starts at string position five essentially for this one so what that's doing is it's just changing this string to left out 24 7. So so the last thing I'm just going to introduce is I'm going to introduce the idea of regular expressions and regular expressions has a million different uses. The use case I'm showing is actually a big query use case. So I'm going to get away from this data set and I'm just going to show you this one that I got directly from big query. I'm going to go through and um, I'm going to go through this later on in more detail, but just want to show you the power of regular expressions. So this will tell you if an email in a data set is a regular email. So what I'm doing is I have three um, sample emails here. I wouldn't really worry about, about this too much. This is just creating a data set of email addresses where one is foo at example.com. So that's an email address. One is bar at example.com and one is a website. So if this regular expression works properly, it will tell us what's valid and what's not valid in a Boolean. So what I'm doing here is a regular expression contains, I'm looking up the email row. So that's the email row here. And I'm asking, is this, um, is this regular expression in the email format? Don't worry about this too much. I just wanted to demonstrate this today. We'll go through this more advanced in a later video. It's going to run this now. And what you'll see is that this is pulling the email row and it is correctly identifying if the email is valid or not. And you can see that this could have a million different use cases. If you want to see if dresses are valid or not, if you want to see if the phone numbers are valid or not, if you want to see formats valid or not. So it's really useful in data cleanup and um, in selecting dirty data and then going about fixing that. So I hope you found this video useful. This is our second video on strings. And in future, we're going to go on to this uh, regular expression video. See you next time for another BigQuery tutorial.